There's no place like Earth, but there may have been another like it billions of years ago. Venera 8, a Soviet atmospheric space probe and lander, examined the surface of our neighboring planet Venus on March 27, 1972, 51 years ago. It was the second spacecraft to successfully touch down on the planet. Surprisingly, Venera 8 was able to make some important geochemical contributions that further support Venus's status as Earth's sister planet, despite our inability to observe the planet's surface from space. Venera 8 also made some eye-opening discoveries about the visibility on Venus's surface. What did the Soviet probe to Venus discover? Will Earth someday resemble hell like Venus? Let's find out. A world with a rocky surface and a molten core once lived around a yellow sun. It held water and might have even supported life. The planet then became extremely heated. Its atmosphere was full of gases that retained heat. Water is lost to space after it evaporates into its atmosphere. Any systems the planet may have had to maintain climate balance were not working. Nothing could live there, not even a robot. This scenario does not come from a science fiction book about climate change. It is what researchers believe actually took place in a world in our own solar system. This world is none other than Venus. With a stratospheric altitude of 34 million miles from Earth, many people consider Mars to be the younger sibling of our planet. Venus, however, is considerably closer to Earth at the closest point in its orbit, being 25 million miles away. In terms of size and mass, Venus and Earth are nearly the same sizes, while the red planet is only about half as big as Earth. Venus is frequently referred to as our sister planet. However, we may also call it our twisted sister planet because it is not a particularly nice location. This is certainly the least welcoming location we could go to. On Venus, where the temperature ranges from 850 to 900 degrees, there are three methods to pass away quickly. One is that you'll melt. Two, the pressure of the atmosphere pressing down on you, which is 92 times that of Earth, will crush you. And three, even if it starts to rain, water won't fall from the sky, it rains sulfuric acid. Venus's atmosphere is so enormously thick and dense, and since CO2 makes up the majority of it, it behaves like a greenhouse overflowing with greenhouse gases. It's an interesting world because unlike on Earth, where temperatures vary greatly from day to day, on Venus the temperature is constant throughout the year. Whether it's night, day or the equator, it is 860 degrees. There seems to be a lot of evidence pointing to Venus having a completely different past, although we're only just beginning to grasp it. Even the possibility that Venus may have had water up until 700 million years ago has been raised in a 2016 report by NASA scientist Michael Way and his team. If so, might Earth be traveling in the same direction as Venus at the moment? That being said, there are still some distinctions between Earth and Venus, the knowledge that was mostly gained as a result of the Soviet Union's research on Venus. The hot and dense atmosphere of Venus has lost popularity in space travel in favor of Mars's colder and thinner atmosphere. Since the Soviet Union's Vega 2 lander was launched in 1985, no lander has been sent to the surface of Venus. The Soviet Union advanced in the space race between 1961 and 1983, with its Venera program's investigation of Venus, launching 28 spacecraft. Not only was Venera 8 the first entirely successful landing on another planet, but it was also the second artificial object to touch down on Venus. The first attempt to partially land on another planet was made by Venera 7, which was launched two years earlier. Nevertheless, a parachute malfunction sent Venera 7 into freefall after it initially touched down, forcing it to flip over and suffer serious damage that prevented it from continuously transmitting high-quality data. Thirteen spacecraft successfully entered Venus's atmosphere over the course of Venera program's 18-year lifespan. Eight of them made it to the planet. 
On March 27, 1972, Venera 8 was put into orbit with the goal of measuring Venus's atmosphere and surface. In 118 days, it arrived on Earth. To keep the machinery running as long as possible, the portion of Venera 8 that was designed to make the fall through the atmosphere to the surface was fitted with a refrigeration system. That's because Venus's surface temperatures can reach levels that are hotter than lead's melting point during the day. In addition to an altimeter, a photometer to detect light, sensors to measure pressure and temperature, and a radio transmitter, Venera 8 also carried a gamma-ray spectrometer. The measurements of Venus's atmosphere made by Venera 7, which, despite difficulties with its landing, was able to report that the atmosphere was 97% carbon dioxide, were to be verified by Venera 8. Moreover, it recorded a pressure of 9.0 MPA as opposed to 0.1 MPA on Earth and a surface temperature of 887 degrees Fahrenheit. These measurements made it clear right away that Venus has no water and is not a place where people could live. Venus similarly lacks, or if it does, it has a very faint magnetic field. This is because Venus's surface is getting close to the Curie temperature. The Curie temperature is a temperature above which a substance loses its magnetic characteristics due to overheating. The measurements taken by Venera 7 were confirmed by Venera 8. However, due to its relatively smooth landing, something unexpected was discovered by Venera 8's photometer. The visibility on the surface of Venus was actually comparable to that of Earth on a cloudy day, and it was possible to see roughly one kilometer in each direction, despite the fact that it was difficult to see through the hazy Venusian atmosphere to the planet's surface. At a great height in the sky, clouds were seen. Engineers working on the Venera project discovered it would be impossible to take a picture on the surface after Venera 8 arrived. As a result, Venera 9 made history in 1975 by becoming the first lander to take pictures of the surface of a planet other than Earth. Less than an hour was spent by Venera 8 on Venus's scorching surface. Thorium, potassium and uranium concentrations in Venus's surface material were also measured by Venera 8 during the 50 minutes and 11 seconds it took to relay data after landing. These elements are trace elements on Earth, which means that they are found in basalts like those in Hawaii or at mid-ocean ridges and in small amounts. Venera 8 was distinctive because, when compared to the data from numerous previous landers, it showed a significant anomaly. Nonetheless, the story of Venus's change from a planet that might resemble Earth to the closest thing to hell in our solar system can teach us valuable lessons about surviving in a warming world. The carbon cycle is a process that has allowed Earth to maintain a stable climate for the past 4.6 billion years. Throughout time, the ocean absorbs the majority of the atmospheric carbon, which is subsequently trapped in rocks such as calcium carbonate or limestone. These rocks are drawn into the interior of the Earth by the movement of tectonic plates, where carbon can be stored for millennia before being belched out into the atmosphere by volcanoes. The carbon cycle serves as the thermostat for the planet, preventing severe temperature swings. When volcanoes are exceptionally active, carbon accumulates in the atmosphere and traps heat in a manner similar to that of a greenhouse roof, thus the name greenhouse effect. Yet higher temperatures can bring on more rain, which increases the erosion of rocks, releases ingredients for the production of calcium carbonate, locks up carbon in the form of seashells, limestone and other rocks, and causes a cooling off of the environment. But the sun gets brighter with age, just like all yellow dwarf stars. Although this steady brightening is far too slow to explain the century-long temperature shift on Earth, it has rendered solar radiation around 40% more powerful than it was 4 billion years ago. At some point, possibly as recently as 500 million years ago, Venus's ability to withstand the heat was compromised. 
its clouds grew too dense and began to absorb more radiation than they were able to reflect. All of the planet's water vaporized due to the extreme heat, which the sun's radiation then split up. Venus's tectonics, assuming it had any, may have been affected by the loss of its water as well, because water is regarded as the crucial lubricant for shifting tectonic plates. Without this recycling system, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere grew to dangerously high levels. It's over at that point. The planet lacks the tools necessary to expel the star's thermal energy. A planet can change when the cycles that keep its climate in balance are disrupted, and Venus has become the symbol for this phenomenon. Its surface is hotter than a self-cleaning oven at more than 850 degrees Fahrenheit. A sulfuric acid-filled atmosphere has a crushing pressure that is comparable to what you would encounter half a mile under the Earth's ocean. If breathing air with a carbon dioxide content of 96% wasn't enough to kill you, that would. Earth will eventually become a furnace as a result of the Sun's progressive brightness increase, but not for another 2 billion years. A much more pressing issue is climate change. Scientists concur that people have broken Earth's natural cycle by using fossil fuels, much as how a hotter sun shattered Venus's temperature control system. It is now being released at least 60 times more quickly than it would under natural processes, releasing the buried carbon of ancient species that would have normally remained trapped beneath the Earth's surface. More quickly than any known shift over the previous 4.6 billion years, the world is warming at a pace of around 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit per 10 years. Even if we burned every drop of oil and gram of coal that is now underground, it is doubtful that our planet will transform into Venus anytime soon. The worst climate change scenarios do not predict warming greater than 8.1 degrees by the end of the century. The average temperature of the Earth would need to increase by dozens of degrees Fahrenheit to cause a runaway greenhouse effect. That merits our humility without a doubt. Planetary systems are kept in a very delicate balance, and it's crucial for people to understand that it doesn't take much to tip the scales and genuinely change things. The long-lasting lander for Venus is being developed by NASA and Advanced Thermal Batteries Inc. ATB, using a high-temperature battery system. This novel battery strategy, which is based on short-lived battery systems used to power missiles, has shown high temperature operation for unprecedented lengths of time, setting the groundwork for a new paradigm in battery technology as well as for Venus landers. The new technology makes use of special chemistry and robust architecture that frequently powers smart missiles. Although this battery system is still under development, the results thus far show that batteries capable of functioning in conditions as harsh as those on Venus can soon become a reality and may provide a new energy storage device for upcoming exploration in challenging environments throughout the solar system. Venus, Earth's sister planet, is a key source of scientific information about our solar system, planets orbiting other stars, and Earth itself. Yet because of Venus's enormous difficulties in gathering the required data, which cannot be addressed by conventional planetary spacecraft design approaches, there are still a great deal of essential basic science questions that remain unanswered about this strange entity. The battery technology has a variety of additional science uses, including missions to investigate Mercury or entering the atmospheres of gas giants, along with other technologies being developed for this long-lasting Venus surface lander. Furthermore, this technology might offer power in places where conventional systems can't. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.